These are the center caps on the stock wheels on the GTO. They are in rough shape mostly because the plastic got brittle and it comes apart. There's enough badging on the car to know that it's a Pontiac, so instead of buying replacements, I figured I'd 3D print some replacements and give them a custom design. So in order to do that, what do we need to know about this? Well, we need to know what type of plastic it is because if we use a plastic that melts at too low of a temperature, when the brakes heat up, it might melt. So if you look in here, this is actually ABS plastic, and that's something that you can 3D print with. Now, I already bought the filament, and I didn't think ABS was going to be strong enough, so I actually bought PETG. Fortunately, that should be even stronger than ABS, so we don't end up with these breaking off. Next, we're going to need to know some sizes. That's why I have this out. We're going to measure all the different dimensions that we need to know on this center cap. That's looking really close to being 60 millimeters. So I don't think 0.2 millimeters off is going to be a deal breaker. And I think that's something that you can sand off pretty easily. So I'm just going to go with 60 millimeters for the outside diameter of the face. I'm taking all the measurements now, putting it into a text file all at once. So when we go and make the 3D object, we don't have to go back and forth between measuring and figuring out what I need to do to make the shape. So the thickness isn't going to matter too much. If you make it too short, then it's going to be inset. If you make it too tall, it's gonna stick out. And depending on what you're designing, you may actually like that. Or you might have something going on in the center where it's going to stick out or stick in anyway, and that little offset doesn't matter too much. But I wanna to try to get it pretty close, so I'm gonna measure it. It's at 4.75 millimeters, let's say. I'm going to say four and a half millimeters on that one. So we've got the width of this cylinder and the depth. So we can basically make this first part here, but I'm going to continue to measure because there's going to be more to it. It's easier to just do it all at once. The next shape that we're going to have to make is another cylinder in the back. It may not look like we have to attach a cylinder to the bottom, but that's what these are going to be. And then we cut away what we don't need. So there's a part in the wheel that's going to stick in here, allowing this to attach. And there's a lip on the end here that sticks up past where this ends. So we need to design a lip as well. I think I'm going to use a really thin toroid around the cylinder when I make it. And then after that, I'll cut away some stuff to make it so it's more like this. Now you kind of want to get this measurement accurate because if you make this too tall, then the part where it locks in place is going to be too far away from the actual lip of the rim. And it'll cause this to wobble in and out unless like other things are holding it together. But that might not be the case after it heats up and cools down a bunch of times from heat cycles with breaking. So having this lip here pretty close to where it needs to be is going to be helpful. So we'll take a few measurements and it looks like it's gonna be eight and a half. There's 8.4. And this is gonna be the very bottom of the lip, not the actual further out part of the lip. I'm just gonna do 8.4 for the uh, margin of error. Inside the wheel is going to be a negative space of a cylinder that this attaches to, so in order to get that size, I can either go to the wheel and measure that cylinder, but then it would be exactly the size and you'd probably have to sand something down, or I can measure this where the margin of error has already been accounted for to some degree. And there you go, 53 on it, the retainer tab cylinder diameter. And if you wanted to make it exactly the same size as these tabs, then you could measure like the size of the tab. That's 20 millimeters. You can get the overall height. Now this is measuring the face too. So you, if we have, yeah, that's about 18 and a half. Then you subtract the face depth, which is 4.5. So that would be 14 millimeters for the size of this. Let's see if I can get a, an estimate of that being correct. Yep, that's about right. All right, so I've fired up Tinkercad. Let's drop in a cylinder. All right, we have our first cylinder. Now let's look at what our data was. 60 millimeter for the face diameter, 4.5 millimeter for the depth. Bring this to 4.5, so it's gonna be 60. We can change this to whatever color we want, but it doesn't really matter. Our next cylinder 
So this is going to have to be 4.5 millimeters up. 4.5. 53 and 8.4. 3. 3. And height was 8.4. Alright, that is not centered because it snaps to the nearest millimeter. And we're going to have to nudge it over half a millimeter. Let's get a higher resolution on these things. So 60 minus 53 would be 7. So 3.5 is going to be the right amount. 3.5. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I forgot to measure the outside diameter of the lip, which isn't super important to get accurate, except if you make it too big, then it's going to have to squeeze in too much and it might snap. And if you make it too small, then it might not hold it in all the way. 54. So that half a millimeter each. 12.9 millimeters. Okay. Lift here needs to be 12 point... Oh, I got it close right there. 12.9. How high do we want the lip to be? Just going to get an estimate here. 3.5 millimeters. 3.5. The overall diameter is 60 millimeters, and that is 54 and a half. That means it needs to be offset by 275. 2.75. Now let's look at it. It's looking better. Thinking the height of that center cylinder needs to be adjusted. Thinking maybe the toroid wasn't the right shape for that. Let's try 12.75. Alright, and then the orange, let's make it a little taller with 9. That's looking better. We've got our basic shape here. So this is a negative space that's going to take away from the shape that we have here. And that is how we're going to get this area that uh, doesn't have anything in it, but we still have this cylinder shape that is partially still there. So actually, let's get rid of that and start with the cylinder in the middle. 49.5. Take this on over here. Looks like it's gonna need to be 5.5. If we were to stop here, it looks like it would have a super strong lip and everything would be supporting itself so it would hold together. But these little tabs need to be able to squeeze in so that they can get past this lip and if they can't squeeze in it's going to be a really difficult job to get these things in or out anytime the wheel comes off the car to be balanced it gets put on a balancing machine and it's going to have a metal rod that sticks through the center cap that's how they hold the wheel onto the machine so they always pop these caps out whenever they balance it so this cap does come in and out for service it needs to be able to deal with that from time to time let's add some negative space 66. That's not any particular size, it's just making sure it covers both ends. What did we have? That was 18, so 20 is pretty close. Let's go... Let's just do 18. This was 20, it would be 20, 20, 20. So 18 is going to be 21, 18, 21 for a total of 60. So that should be right down the middle, and it is. Rotate this 90 degrees. So this isn't done, but I'm going to export it, print it, make sure that it fits, and see if there's any kind of tweaks that need to be made so it fits better. Keeping it simple at this stage also makes it easier to print. All right, right away I can tell that there's going to be some issues. See how this, the toroid comes in and that's gonna be a thin area? This is probably gonna break off, so. I should probably fix that. I think I might want to make this toroid a little taller. That'll help fill in this gap. It'll also make this go up a little higher. And if you make this more of a uh, gradual slope, it's going to make it easier to push it in. So yeah, before I even print this, I'm going to go in and do that change. All right, so here's the part. I can already tell these are a little on the stiff side. So we need to do something about that. Also, the inside infill is a little light. And I can feel it crunching and collapsing on the inside when I press on it. 
And I, I do that because you have to hit the back of this with like a screwdriver or something to knock it out when you have it on the wheel. And that's going to get some impact damage. Here's a spare GTO wheel. And... All right, that looks pretty good. Just checking for gaps and issues with the fit. Seems like it fits pretty well. Pretty flush with everything. There's what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, that fit is perfect. That came out kind of easy though. All right, so here's what a wheel looks like on the car. And there's plenty of space in there for those tabs to go in. In fact, I can make them a lot taller if I wanted to. I don't need to, but just showing that there's plenty of space in there. Here's the front. Plenty of room here, too. We're here at the spare rim once again to test out our second prototype. Make sure it goes in nicely. All right. That's got a solid feel to it. I like that. Let's see how hard it is to take it back out. That's reasonable. So off camera, I made some changes to the design. I took notches out of the corners and moved the support to the center so that that notched area has a little more durability to it. And then the work of pressing is on the edges, which have more flex to them. I also made a lot more overhang slanted and more gradual. As you can see behind the tabs is a gradual buildup. Let me see if I can, yeah, you can see the gradual line in there and they all have that. This is slanted too. I moved the edges of the point between these tabs a little closer to the tab. So there's a little less overhang there. The edge of the face has more curve to it and that should reduce the amount of plastic used too. This is currently sticking out and I don't want that. I want it to go in. So we're gonna make that a hole and click on this. The height is 16.5. So let's see how deep this goes in. 16. So this is just 0.5 millimeters in. So let's do a full millimeter. 15.5 from the base. Yeah. My logo is hard to get exactly centered because there's a lot of empty area over here. And this is pretty flat. The top is pretty flat. This is flat for the area where it's not being cut off for this empty area here. So it's tricky to get it centered and make it look right. So I just kind of eyeball it and it looks pretty nice like this. So I'm just going to go with it that way. If you wanted to make your logo centered, you could go use the ruler since this is 60 millimeters, then you would make the little black dot on the center of the shape. I'll show you that. This black dot right here would need to be right in line with this. So if your shape, See, the shape is just about 50, and since the overall shape is 60, it would be five. So yeah, this is pretty much centered top to bottom. All right, all done, and it looks good. Oh no, well that's not good. That's not what I wanted. So this is not a perfect match, but it's pretty close. And it's not going to be yellow next to yellow. It's going to be in that silver wheel, so I think it's close enough. Nice. And there's the last one. This one turned out the best yet. Let's pop this thing into this wheel. Nice. It's looking good. Now I think that would look a lot better if the silver on this wheel was black. What do you think? I was trying to put the center cap in there and I broke it. I accidentally put it in too sideways and when I tried to correct it just snapped off. So put it straight in, not kind of one corner and then pivot around it. One of the perks of these though is that if I ever end up breaking one or losing one, I can just print a new one for like 20 cents worth of plastic. There's some stuff that I have to do before this thing is back on the road and I can test the wheel center caps out, but being that the previous ones were ABS and this plastic should have a higher melting temperature, 
I believe it's going to do better than the stock caps. I'm going to upload these designs, both the one with my logo and without it. Just a blank canvas for you to design whatever you want on it. I'll have a link to that in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video.